So we've got two more people left, Badger Jones and Sabrina Bershad. I met her recently, but I'll talk about her when you're there. Badger, I've never met, except that we've known each other online for way too long, um, probably since the 90s, because I think he was on some of the FMA lists that I was on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I find out he gets to beat on my very good friend Craig Mason all the time and vice versa, so that makes me happy. Uh, as soon as my hip finishes healing, I might join you guys, but you got to be nice to me. Yes, very nice. <laughs> anyway, so the normal spiel, please uh, please be conscious about what you can and can't do. Don't do this stuff if your doctor says not to, all of that good stuff. Uh, other thing is, is don't hurt other people. Nobody's asking you to hurt your sore for other people because we're all responsible, conscientious, reasonable people. So be, be, be excellent to yourself and the people around you. And then lastly, of course, everybody stays on mute. Pin your instructor. So the next one is Badger. He has no last name, at least on, on this <laughs> on this social connection. Um, pin him, ask questions in chat, or when there's a blank pace, he'll ask you questions and you're free to come off chat and ask questions and interact. That'd be great. And then turn on closed captions so you can see what the heck he's saying. Maybe, maybe you can't hear or maybe you think he has a strange accent. I don't think so, but <laughs> anyway. All right, so here's what I have on him. He's going to be sharing some uh, his his work, and if you don't know, he's a chili dog with dog brothers. So he, his Arnie style has a relationship to that. But I'll let him finish the introduction. Badger, thanks for joining us. I really appreciate it. Over to you. Hey, awesome. Um, glad to be here. But as they say, at my age, I'm glad to be anywhere. Um, so yeah, um, so uh, really quick background on me. I started martial arts in 1982. Um, started Filipino arts specifically in 91, I think. Um, so I guess that makes me an advanced beginner by now. Um, yeah, uh, full dog brother, chili pepper dog, uh, blue sash and Krabi Kerbong. Um, uh, also, I have a uh, teaching rank in, um, in a Shaolin art, but uh, I haven't taught Chinese martial arts in, uh, in some time. Uh, just my focus is el elsewhere. Uh, so, okay. So, um, one of the things that I think has probably been going on today, there's uh, a lot of the presenters are probably saying something along the lines of like, shit, that's what I was going to say. Um, the problem being, there's only so many ways to swing a stick. And we can we can number them however we want. We can um, we can name them however we want. We can give precedence to certain forms, and we can give certain um, uh, we can weight things a certain way. Like oh, I like to, you know, in our in our practice we get in close, and in our practice uh, we like Largo. Um, and uh, but but when we get down to it all, really, there's only so many ways to move the human body. Um, and uh, Dan and Asanto, I think it was, said there's only so many ways to move the human body, and everybody invented them. Um, so if if everybody only has a limited number of strikes and methods of motion and ability to move um, a stick from one side of the body to the other side uh, and the same basic musculature some developed more than others whatever um, what sets things apart um, for me at least it can come down to one one of two things one is um, set style so like I said, I, I did Chinese martial arts. Uh, I taught Chinese martial arts for quite a few years. And the Chinese martial arts are awesome for that in that, um, you know, you get two instructors, uh, even from the same lineage, same, uh, same teacher or whatever, and one of them will say, no, you do this. And the other one will say, no, 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 no. That's, that's completely fallacious. No, 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 it's, it's this. Not this, but this. And, and you're sort of looking at it and saying, "Well, I don't, I don't really see much of a difference." And they'll assure you, but there is. Um, and they may be right, and they may be wrong. Um, that's that's sort of the stylistic uh, imposition of style. The other way is training principles. Um, 
we all have you know, a forehand and a backhand. We can number this and name this any way we want. Um, and uh, you can learn in a method that's very uh, um, rigid. You know, your teacher telling you, this is exactly where your stick starts next to your ear or whatever. This is exactly where your stick ends. This is the path you will take. This is the way you will do it, which works great if you and your teacher are uh, simpatico in terms of size, muscle, um, uh, uh, your, the, the way you naturally move, all of these things. Uh, I have one teacher. I'm, I'm five foot eight and 155 pounds. So I'm in the average range for a North American male. Uh, one of my teachers was six foot four and 240 pounds. The teacher I had after that was five foot even and uh, weighed 100 pounds if he was carrying a refrigerator on his back. Um, their methods of movement are not going to be the same. Their uh, abilities and their attributes and inclinations towards movement are going to be completely different. So how do we how do we make this happen? How do we bring this forward? So, um, Siling Labuyo, SLA. Um, we centered on three principles. Well, we centered on one principle that has three parts. The principle is aliveness. Um, and a lot of different, just like with, you know, one teacher saying, hold your hand like this, and one teacher saying, hold your hand like this. Uh, there's a lot of people who use the term and they define it differently, and that's awesome. Um, for us, the concept breaks down into three parts. Um, one is um, we need to have a resisting partner. Uh, number two is real-time motion. Um, and number three is uh, unrehearsed motion. And we can dial these up or down. Um, it doesn't serve to take uh, the beginner who's brand new, it's his first day in, and uh, say, okay, so uh, full contact sparring, let's you know, ramp it up, new guy. Um, we, can, we can dial these things up, and we can dial these things down. We can also do it in case of, um, we all have used sticks and we all know that sticks are uh, a weapon in their own right, but they're also a stunt double for um, things that are less uh, training friendly, right? The live blades or whatever. Um, no, trainer. Um, we can take a beginner and they will need to, to uh, be introduced to higher levels of contact slowly. We can take an advanced practitioner and hand them um, a live blade and say, we're going to dial this down. It makes sense to dial it down. Uh, whether we're going, we're talking about the, uh, the resistance from your partner, we're talking about the, how unrehearsed the actions are going to be or how, um, how real time those actions are going to be. Um, but our goal is to achieve maximum expression of those three principles in all of our training. It doesn't happen all the time, and it doesn't happen 100% of the time, and it doesn't happen at 100% of each of those values. Um, okay, so let me, uh, actually, let's just quickly look at the comments, just in case anybody's got anything to mention. Um, I'm not seeing anything right at the moment, but yeah, he'll come in. Hey, Roger Whistle just joined. Oh, I know him. Yep. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so let, let me let me um, um, talk a little bit more about each of these principles. So um, I'm going to go with real time action first. Um, We've all seen in demonstrations where you've got the one student or the one, the one training dummy who stands here and strikes like this and then stops dead. He's so angry that he feels the, the compulsion to, to strike another human being with a weapon, but he's so easily satisfied that 
he's now lost all will to fight. It's just vanished from him. While uh, you know, the teacher goes to town and does 50 different strikes. Uh, and I get it in terms of demonstration, right? Nobody, you know, I'm demonstrating, you're demonstrating in front of a crowd of however many people and uh, they don't want to see, you know, people cutting axes or something like this. They want to see something flashy. So in that context, yeah, yeah, fine, whatever. In terms of your practical training, in terms of your training day to day, if we have a problem with one person doing this and the other person responding with 50 moves. Um, it's the height of lack of, of, uh, of aware of aliveness. And I think I've actually drifted off my first point there. Um, getting me to talk for half an hour isn't the problem. Uh, getting me to talk on topic for half an hour, that's a problem. Um, all right, so let's take this again. One person does this. Um, in terms of real, let, let's, uh, I can't remember which of the three I started with, so I'm just going to jump around anyway. Um, you'll get used to it. Um, if we're talking about real-time action, um, we all know that unless you are, um, unless the person you are uh, opposing you is um, hampered somehow, whether uh, physical injuries or an extreme disparity in skill levels between you and them, or they're hungover or they're inebriated or they're whatever. Um, you can pretty much guess that for every strike I get, you will be able to get a strike too. It's going to be very difficult for me to get, you know, 10 strikes for your one. Um, so if your practice includes that, uh, we would, we would say, uh, you need to drift away from that. You need to move away from that. If your practice, um, if your partner again does this and stops, uh, no matter how many strikes you do after that, you need to stop doing that because this is not a resisting opponent. This isn't a credible opponent. Um, even if your strike goes to here, that's twice as, uh, it's 100% improvement from your partner who does this, even if it's just coming through here. Um, if your partner um, has to give up somewhere in the sequence, right? Uh, you know, he strikes, he strikes, he strikes, and then suddenly you have the upper hand, right? I block, and I block, and I block, and then suddenly I'm able to respond, and he's not, um, again, you have a problem and you have a, a, a removal from the realities of not even fighting, just efficient sparring. We don't all have to be fighters, and a lot of us don't want to be fighters. Um, but in our practice, there's going to be sparring. Um, and your sparring should include those three elements. Resisting a partner, real-time action, um, and unrehearsed actions. Um, okay, so that, that's me blabbing about that. Blabbing incoherently about that subject for a bit. Um, any questions right at the moment? I will stare vainly into the camera. God, I'm beautiful. Um, You better put it up because I'll keep talking. Oh, Tim says, what's your main style? But I think we have main style. Um, so uh, Tim and I have kind of a martial family connection. Um, so my guru was, is a gentleman named Pete Coutts. And uh, um, Tim and Pete are sort of of the same generation um, in, uh, yeah, <laughs> I see, I see Tim's comment. Yes. Yeah, um, 
So uh, Tim is, I think, if, if we were expressing things in a Chinese martial arts method, Tim would be my martial arts uncle. Uh, so yeah, um, so technically I started training in modern art, my Filipino training is in modern modern Arnis. But uh, as we all know, there's, there's quite the uh, diaspora for that. Um, by the time, Pete started teaching me. Um, I think what he was showing me was very, very different from what he had been taught. Um, and by the time I started teaching people, I had made a lot of changes from what Pete had taught me. So I could say, um, I could say uh, uh, I'm a modern artist practitioner, but uh, it's not. I'm so far off, uh, so far away from uh, from that, and that's not a that's not a critique. I should say um, I'm not um, I'm not slagging it. I'm just saying that uh, Filipino martial arts they drift. It's 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 endemic to it, and it's uh, I think it's one of the great strengths of it is that there's so much variation to it. Um, and then uh, um, alongside that, I did a lot of Chinese martial arts. Um, I've had the uh, um, um, I've had the luck to, uh, uh, I've been into Krabi Krabong the last couple of years, which is kind of a new, new addition for me. Um, and the, the power I'm getting out of that is kind of awesome. Like I said, I'm not a big man. So, um, the idea that I'm generating power is a little, you know, upsetting to me. Um, and in addition to that, uh, I do capoeira. I've been doing that for uh, about a dozen years now, um, which uh, um, adds some amazingly weird quirks to one's footwork. Uh, I still swing a stick just the same old way, but uh, how the lower half of me gets around on the floor is a different thing. Uh, cool. How are we? Um, Okay, yeah, I'm seeing uh, uh, I'm seeing some other questions. Yeah, um, so I haven't, uh, Pete, uh, I'll give you some background on Pete Coates. So he's living off in the woods somewhere, um, kind of hillbilly territory in uh, upstate New York, uh, where he describes every conversation with a neighbor as being an armed confrontation. So good, uh, good awareness training there for you. Um, all right, let's talk about uh, any quick, any more questions, questions just before we uh, I get back into my hardcore babbling. Yeah, now everybody's uh, just it's sound me. My dulcet voice has lulled them all to sleep. I'm sure that's it. Okay, so uh, let's talk about let's talk about how we achieve these things. Um, uh, so again, because we're all we're all different people, we have different sizes. Um, you know, uh, Ty's upper arms are about the size of my entire rib cage. Um, so you know, his his methods of motion, his ability to move his arms, uh, is going to be very different from my ability to move my arms. Um, even even something as simple as how your shoulder is going to move is going to is going to vary a lot between individuals. Um, so the trick here is um, any time we are going to um, anytime we're gonna we're gonna uh, drill something, and I'm a big believer in drills, and I'm a big big believer in 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 putting in repetitions. Um, but you have to avoid falling into the trap of one person giving you the set response and you get to do your response back to them. If we say something like, even if we're gonna go something super basic, let's go with, um, I'm gonna work a roof block. So say, you know, you're a new student. You've just been taught this. And I go, oh, okay, this is, this is kind of funky. Uh, yeah, you know, when you're, Doing all the usual things that we all did when we were learning learning how to do a roof block, because uh, um, we all have that in common. Um, 
all of our successes in striking and stuff like that are going to be similar and all of our, our failures are going to be similar too. We all have, uh, there's certain patterns that just keep showing up. Anyway, so say it's going to be one person's going to throw a high strike, high forehand, let's say. The other person's going to respond with the roof block. Um, we can give general principles on how to respond. I don't like the idea of saying, okay, you're going to come in with a roof block, forehand to the temple, backhand to the knee, forehand to the temple. It's a great combination. Works just fine, right? All right. Well, well. But it might not be for everyone. It might not flow for you. It might never flow for you. Uh, you might might take part of that. You might go roof block, forehand to the head, forehand to the head, forehand to the knee. That might be the thing that shows up spontaneously for you, works really well for you. Um, and you can machine that to to a great uh, degree of, of uh, proficiency. And you will never, maybe this forehand, backhand, high forehand, maybe that combination will never ever express itself, right? In sparring or in real fighting. Um, so the in our method of thinking, the best principles is to say, okay, you know, we're going to drill this because you need to you need to drill a roof block. Okay, so let's let's work this. Person's going to give you a high strike. You're going to block that, and I want you to come out with three strikes in return. Any three. One, one, two, three, or whatever it doesn't matter. Um, and the uh, the person who's feeding you that first strike, right? The person who's giving you that first initial high strike, they need to keep blocking. Okay. Again, they're not going to do this. You do your roof block, and then three strikes come in on you. All right. I'm going to give you a high strike. You're going to block it with the roof. You're giving me three random strikes. I need to now block them because I don't know what they are. So even though I'm feeding strikes, and we've all suffered through a lot of classes where we just felt like we were just the moop jong, right? just throwing strikes, um, I now have a very active role in my training and your training on both sides, as, a, as the, the person feeding strikes and the person who's working on the roof floor. Right? I now have to... Pay attention to your strikes. I now have to respond to your strikes. I need to stay in the zone, always blocking. Uh, we both learn. And that might have to be done at a very slow pace. Right? Again, the whole aliveness thing. We might have to, you know, depending on relative skill levels, it might have to be one, two, three, four, done at that pace. The difference is that pace is totally fine. Right? Uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong with doing that pace, doing things at that speed, if that is appropriate to your skill level and your training level and a safety level. Right? Um, we do uh, one drill uh, we do a lot of. Um, we're always working, we, we tend to work with triplets, and this is really common through Filipino martial arts, right? You know, I give a strike, you give a strike, I give a strike, and then we change roles. You give a strike, I give a strike, and you give a strike. Right? Very, 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 very common um, method of training. Um, and we can do that with stick, we can do it with, uh, with knife, uh, we can do it with longer sticks. It doesn't matter. We can do it in empty hands. Uh, again, the, the whole joy and versatility of Filipino martial arts is being able to take that one drill, triplets in this case, and um, throw it to the wind, whatever we want to do. So we do a lot of those triplet strikes um, where you get to practice being the attacker. You get to be the person being the counterattacker, and then you get to switch roles. You get to be the counterattacker, and you get to be um, we've added one 
One thing we love doing with this one is uh, what we call the uh, the Cherry Dog Cha Cha. Uh, so Cherry Dog is one of the guys who trains with us. He's a full dog brother too, and uh, he uh, he likes to throw in three strikes at the end of it. Right. So if we're doing a triplet, say I'm doing, I attack, boom, you block it. You counterattack, I block it. I throw my third strike. Um, and I keep going. All right. All right. Attack, block, attack, 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 attack. Right. Uh, I said earlier um, that uh, it's unlikely that we're going to be that much faster than our opponent, right? Typically, it's I get to throw a strike for every strike you throw, more or less. Uh, but there way, there's ways to change that equation, and an, an aggression is often one of them. Um, but yeah, if I'm here, attack, block, attack, attack, attack. And I could conceivably just keep going until I'm standing over here, uh, you know, whatever. That's probably outside of the, train, uh, the range of normal training. Um, but suddenly we're faced with three attacks, uh, three strikes coming in at you. Uh, they can be coming in very hard and fast, depending on your level of training, and you have to respond and you have to block them. Um, that whole idea of, of um, unrehearsed action, having to respond to unrehearsed action, makes you, well, I, I think I would like to hope it makes you um really good at recognizing opportunity dealing with stick management um and being able to uh work with your momentum right? if if you're constantly taught patterns um if you're constantly taught a, a pattern to your motion that's great as long as your motion fits in with that pattern. Um, if, if your pattern is just charging with an attack, that works actually really well. Um, so, you know. Um, we want to be able to, to respond to the other person's energy uh, in a spontaneous fashion. We want to be able to insert our own attacks in a spontaneous fashion. Um, cool. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of comments coming up, but I'm not reading them because, uh, okay, I'm not illiterate, but, um, yeah. Um, okay, qu uh, questions at the moment. I'm just looking through comments really quick. Um, there was one asking about uh, more information about capoeira footwork and how that might integrate or affect how you move, just curiosity's sake. Yep. Yep. Um, okay, so let me let me talk a little bit about capoeira footwork. So this is kind of funny. So I um, I'm going to see if I can change the camera around a little bit so you can see more of my, uh, my shapely legs. Uh, so we're going to move this down a bit. That's as I destroy everything in my immediate vicinity. All right. Yeah, the cats have been banned from the room. That's probably a, a good idea. Okay, um, I'm going to move back, and people can uh, uh, tie. If you can just let me know if you can see my my uh, shapely legs. They're the best. Thank you. Yeah. No, I can see just to right to your right at the bottom of your sole, basically. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, um, so this was kind of funny. Um, so, like I said, I've been doing capo for about a dozen years now, and I tried really, really hard. Um, to incorporate footwork. I'm a huge fan of footwork. I'm not a big person, so uh, my ability to hit you hard is limited by my mass. Um, so if, if you have a disparity in that, you have to make it up somewhere else. And for me, that was footwork. So in Philippine arts, we typically see, you know, this sort of motion, right? You know, on the... Uh, Boom, you know, defensive triangle or attacking triangle. Boom. Let me get a tool in my hand here. 
um, um, tack and triangle, um, and or defensive triangle. In Catalina, uh, the basic footwork is called the Django. And it's, I think you'll, you'll immediately see why I, 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 I was immediately captivated with the idea of incorporating this in my, in my Filipino forward. Right, so Shinga is a step back kind of laterally, step up to an even, um, an even facing, and then back. So there's a point behind you. Filipino arts, where we're talking about triangles all the time, imagine that there's a triangle projecting behind you. So I'm putting my foot on that point, bringing it back up to uh, neutral, and then back to that point. So we use this footwork all the time. And I thought this this is this is good stuff. And uh, uh, yeah, but it blends the footwork and the opportunity to do an expressive kick very, very tightly. Uh, it's not stop, throw a kick. Even the, the, the kicks that you're probably very familiar with, front, front kick, side kick, round kick. Um, because the other person is going to be trying to kick you at the same time. And if you stop, you get kicked. You can be immobile or you can be intact. You cannot be both. Um, so I tried really hard to incorporate this footwork, Jenga, with this footwork. And it seems like it was very frustrating for me because it seems like it should meld almost instantly. Um, Answer, it doesn't. Um, until years later, uh, I was watching some video of me fighting or sparring or whatever, and I was kind of blown away because, like, what the hell? There's, there's me doing Shinga in, in an FMA sparring or fighting situation. And I kind of, I, uh, I said something about this, and all my students just turned to me like, Yes, dumbass, you've been doing that for a long time. Uh, dumbass is a term of respect uh, in our, it's a Filipino word, I'm sure. Yeah, those, um, are, the, anyway. those are the best kind of students to use that term. Um, yeah, one of the things that, that goes along with, um, for us in terms of aliveness and things like this, I'm just gonna take a quick digression because that's all I ever do. Um, is that uh, we need to be open to criticism, we need to be open to comment, we need to be open to improvement. Um, some of the best variations of drills I've ever seen come out of somebody screwing things up heinously and all of us turning around and saying, actually, that's kind of cool. Show us that again. Um, I don't like the term wrong. In martial arts, I don't like right and wrong. I like suboptimal. Uh, you might not have an opportunity to do anything. Like this is a horrible block. It's a really bad block, but it might be all you have the opportunity to do. You might be back on your heels. You might be in a rooted position. Uh, you're caught off guard. Whatever the person has uh, managed to uh, fake you out somehow, and this is the only reaction you have but you didn't get hit, so I'm okay with that. It's not optimal, but you didn't get hit. Oh, okay. Badger, Badger. Uh, quick thing, a uh, few minute warning just now, so you know. Yep, cool, okay, so um, let's talk about Shinga and Capoeira and triangle footwork and Filipino arts. So if I'm doing this, I'm stepping backwards, boom, I can extend an arm forward. I am voiding this space. I'm taking this space and I am leaving it blank. For those of you who do uh, footwork like um, um, 
on Cortana, right? On Cortana footwork is very, very similar to Jenga. If I step back to open up the space, I can step forward again. Um, some schools have what they call a pendulum drill. In some ways, maybe you could incorporate that. Right. Switching the feet changes which direction you can now move. If I'm here, right, I can move forward, I can move to my left. The rear foot dictates where you're gonna go. If I do this, most people figure I'm gonna charge you. Right? Or uh, if you do Muay Thai, I'm switching my footing because I'm gonna kick with the other leg. But here's a fun one. I love this one. Right. I'm here doing Jenga. Switch feet, and I'm gonna go this way. I'm here, boom, switch feet. I can charge you, but now I can go this way, which I couldn't before. Right. I'm here. Boom, and I'm off. So for Capoeira, we're really big on strategically moving our foot because moving the foot gives us placement, but it also gives us uh, facing to execute a kick. Um, and we can do the same with strikes. Gives us placement. I can now strike with this, which I couldn't previously. Right here I could, but I can reach kind of. Boom, now I avoided the middle. Now back out. And you can see FMA in here too. Partly because I'm double wielding swords, but I expect you can see commonalities in motion. Again, there's only so many ways to move the human body and everybody invented them. All right. How are we doing on time? We're just right at to where you should have any questions or anything like that. So. Well, do you anything else you want to like? By the way, badge. Is there ways that people can follow you or keep in touch with you? Uh, yeah, we've got the website uh, youngforest.ca. Um, I'm on Instagram, Ceiling Um Facebook, Badger Jones. Feel free to uh, go through all that stuff. The website needs a big update. <laughs> I believe it was updated in the Precambrian, but uh, ever since then, not so much. I can relate. I hand coded mine. Uh, anybody have any questions for Badge? You can come off mute if you want to real fast. Yeah, questions are good. They are. I may even have an answer. So do uh, do uh, Roger and Craig have, have it, find it hard to uh, hit you when you move around like that? Uh, if, if they do, they haven't, um, I haven't noticed. So <laughs> Craig hits a lot and hard. <laughs> uh, and uh, Roger uh, is very disrespectful. Even though he's my student, he keeps hitting me. Thanks. I don't know. It's these days. That's the best kind. I have a yeah, really. couple of my students on here. They do the same thing. And they give me crap, too. Yeah. Another another thing that I love is that um, the idea of aliveness and the idea of personal expression means that uh, for people like Roger who's trained with me and and all of my students, none of my students have a look. None of them have like, oh, that you move like so and so, like eh, whatever. We look like a random collection. That works. Well, uh, I just wanted to say thanks before we get into Sabrina's time. Thanks, 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 Badge, so much. I, I kind of contacted you last second. I um, appreciate that you were willing to come on board because uh, Craig mentioned your name and was like, oh, you're coming? Cool. Let's let's see if he wants to share. So thank you very much. Appreciate it a lot. Um, I'm going to answer one question that's on there. There's a question about becoming a full board brother. Uh, basically, it's show up and fight. Keep showing up to gatherings. Keep fighting. 
be a good person. Uh, eventually, the tribe will say, oh, yeah, you get to be a dog brother. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks again, Badge. Uh, it's nice to meet you in real life, sort of. <laughs> it's nice to meet you in, yeah, 21st century version of real life, apparently. There you go.